Good evening, everyone, to another episode of Creativity and the Paranormal. And tonight, we have paranormal author Norm Harris. Welcome, Thank Norm. You. Yeah, hello. Thanks. And uh, I'm just going to start out right away with some uh, information about Norm. So here is what uh, I have to say from his mouth about Norm Harris. Except for time spent in military service, I live in the Pacific Northwest with my legal beagle, son KK, and seven large tropical fish from the Amazon River. I am second generation uh, Seattleite. That's what they call those of us who dwell in the shadows of Mount Rainier. Yeah. I have had the opportunity to travel our planet many times over. My stories are created from my memories of my personal experiences, the places I have visited, and the people and friends I have known. Fast forward 20 years. I had acquired some months of free time. I hired an editor and proofreader and published a second edition of my book. At the same time, I dusted a second and unpublished manuscript titled Arid Sea. It too was edited and proofread. I had a third untitled manuscript, which was partially written. I completed it, added a title, and submitted the work for editing and proofreading. The three books were written as a series, now titled Spider Green Mystery Thriller Series. I love that, actually. The three yeah. were accepted by the Wild Rose Press for publication this past fall in the series, The Girl Who Knew Death. A fourth book is now uh, available as well and was published in 2022, correct? That's right. It is available. Okay. And I know that I'm reading this from a previous post um, and... Uh, you can, you know, update me on anything in just a moment. But first, I'd love to uh, say for us the blurb about The Girl Who Knew Death, the green uh, sp spider green mystery thriller series book four. Again, available now, everyone. Katrina Lavrona, who was rescued by Spider Green and is her adopted and is her adopted daughter, must face her destiny and is just coming of age into her role as a princess when she is thrown into an Egyptian prison. Katrinka manages to escape with the help of young Latina American embassy guard, Marine Corporal Lopez, forcing Spider to navigate stormy international waters again to save her. Katrinka finds herself in flight. She and Spider also attract the attention of the demon Mazikim, who introduces further confrontations and impossible dilemmas as the two women struggle towards freedom and an elusive truth that will change their lives and relationship yet again. As Kat steps into her roles as an adopted daughter, a Russian military agent, a future Russian princess, and an uncommon friend of um, Azrael, the angel of death, or it could be Azrael, the Angel of Death, readers receive a powerful story that weaves elements of paranormal encounters into the center of the international intrigue that powers the plot. Like its predecessors, the girl who knew death excels in the fast-paced action, unpredictable twists, and injections of extraordinary encounters that are the trademark of author Norm Harris's special brand of female-driven thrillers. Oh, that sounds wonderful. That sounds story, like a book yeah. I want to read. <laughs> or listen to. There's an ebook version. I mean, an uh, audio version, too. Audio book. Oh, it's an audio book, too. That's wonderful. E -book, That's wonderful. Paperback and audio book, yeah. And it's, it's uh, I, I find it really enthralling to bring in an international mystery with the paranormal. You know? Well, you know, That's you think it was about kind of getting Egypt. from. Yeah, you think about Egypt, there's a lot of mysticism going around there anyway, you know. The, oh, yes. Oh, you know, the Sphinx absolutely. The uh, pyramids and all that stuff. So it's yes. And I've it's been there, so I could write about it mm -hmm. in pretty good detail with my experiences, and then I could, you know, add it to the story. It's a very rich land, isn't it? 
Yeah. Mystical. It is. It's yes. very, very mystical. Well, let me start with this question for you. Uh, sure. What is it about the paranormal realm that inspires you to write in that particular genre? Well, that's actually, when I write a story, it's either based on a, a song or based on a movie. And one of my favorite movies uh, was, actually, it was made twice, it was called Death Takes a Holiday. I don't know, have you seen oh. Death Takes a Holiday? And yes. Meet Joe Black with the Brad Pitt. And in both cases, yeah. death comes uh, in the form of a human, and he's he's got a purpose, yeah. but in both cases, he falls in love with someone. And then he's got a dilemma, you know, does he go back to being, you know, the angel of death, or does he take the woman with her? Or what, you know, it, it's kind of interesting right. that way. So I kind of use that as my basis, but one of my more favorite songs was or is um, Sympathy for the Devil, which was yes. uh, Rolling Stones and a bunch of other people. So I kind of blended that all together and made my one of my major characters Lady Death or oh. Asriel, who is an archangel for, for um, you know taking people to the afterlife. And then I've got my character protagonist Phaedra, and she had to have something. And uh, I wanted to introduce a new character. And so that was Corporal Lopez. But I wanted to have yes. a Latina. I'm kind of a, a you know, diversity, equality, and, and that type of person. So I like to have all kinds of characters that are of different ethnicities and try to bring that into it as well. So that was kind of how that came together. Plus, I'd been to Cairo and I could write about it. And I'd been to Paris and I could write about it. And so I could yes. bring those set or in Moscow and I could bring those cities in just based on what I saw when I was there, things that had happened to me. So it's all kind of firsthand experience in a way. Kind of bringing um, your personal experiences and the paranormal and your love of, like you say, death takes a holiday, stories like that all together in, in one, right? Yep, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what inspires. Right. And yeah. then when you're writing, you feel this charge, this excitement of what you're writing because you brought all these things together. You I'm can. assuming. <laughs> no, I mean, that's... there's a scene in there where Phaedra and Asriel go for a ride on a camel. Well, I did that. I rode all over the Sahara Desert on a camel so I could talk talk about that. And mm -hmm. so I visited the Sphinx and I visited the pyramids and I, I wrote about yes. the hotel I stayed in. And I mean, it's just so easy to do. Same with Paris, you know, I could write about the right. Eiffel Tower and the Seine River because I'd done it and I just put the, my characters in where I had been and I tell the story. Yeah. You know, I did not meet the angel of death, though. I had to kind of make that one. Up. <laughs> I used Brad Pitt for that, right? For that role model, you know. Not yeah. yet. One day we all will, but not yet. <laughs> you know, um, it, so, yeah. hey, I have to. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I know. Bad joke. Um, now you kind of answered it a little bit, but are there any other favorite paranormal movies or TV shows that you enjoyed as a kid or currently that is your favorite? Would you consider uh, Lucifer, the television program, as a paranormal? I was going to mention that when you said the mm -hmm. devil is being sympathetic or something. I'm, I was the thought Sympathy of Lucifer. For the devil, yeah. Yeah, you know what right happened? Away. I used to watch Lucifer all the time, but the narrator uh, who does uh, The Girl Who Knew Death was actually on that program. And so she really did a good job oh, of taking wow. her experiences from the television program and then yeah. putting it over into the book. I mean, she did a great job because she'd lived it, you know, basically. That's with, amazing. With, well, with what Lucifer character TV was she? Program. Sorry. Say, go ahead. On Lucifer, what did she play? You know, I don't know. I, I knew at one time, I'll have to go back and look, but uh, I used to watch well, that program all the time. So I kind of a feel for that as well. Yeah. You know, Brings so, a great element even to the audio uh energy the audio version of it to have someone from a show like that mm -hmm. you know do like you said do the narration that adds to it yeah she had yeah. some good stories about that program but uh, right. she's been on many programs too she i think maria has been on oh, maybe 45 different television programs like mm -hmm. Grey's anatomy and oh she was on young and restless and all these things she can bring yeah. all those experience into all my characters and give some voice to it as well. She's really very good. 
Excellent I like choice. The I like the audio books yeah. and reading, you know, myself. One day I hope to do mine in audio. Uh, can't do it yet. But anyway, um, it's on the to-do list. Yeah, when you need help, let, let me know, because I know people and I know the yes. inexpensive ways to do it and so forth. So Right. Yeah. I'll make a note of that. Um, yep. So now I ask this of everyone, and uh, it's whatever you want to answer. Have you ever seen a ghost or had a paranormal experience uh, yourself? No, I don't think so yeah i don't think so. okay well that's fine yeah. you know <laughs> i know they're out there i just yeah you've probably heard of everyone's heard of someone who has a ghost story or has a little kind of a head scratcher or something like that yeah so. no kidding especially at halloween <laughs> oh halloween yeah you see them all yeah the time. <laughs> now True. what if what advice would you give to um, a striving writer out there, perhaps someone put, you know, putting their manuscript together for an agent or publisher or someone who's writing their script and trying to get published? Oh, well, you got to have a story, that's for sure. And yes. you got to be brave. You just can't. You know, I think what happens is you start writing and then you go back, well, I think I'll edit that. And I'll I just sit down and I write the whole thing through. I don't stop. I don't mm -hmm. do nothing. Then I go back and think about it, but uh, I think you can really tie yourself up by just taking too much time to think about what you're doing and not what you should be doing, and that's making your story. Go back and edit it later, and yeah. if you're going to self-publish, yes. just be sure it's really well edited. You, you can't. You can have a good cover. You got to have. You got to. You know, people are going to tear you apart if they don't like. You know, if you're missing something, you know, and you're editing. Mm -hmm which is why I paid an editor to do it. Even though the publisher would have provided an editor, I figured there's going to be too much explaining how these characters interact with each other. And so I just had an editor who edited all my books, do it, and then I gave it to the publisher. And then they had nothing oh, okay. to edit. And then they had nothing to edit. So that made it go faster. That makes their <laughs> job easy. <laughs> yeah, it cost more money, but I got it the way I wanted it that way. You know? Right, right. And I've so heard, I'm, yeah, yeah, you know, I would just say if someone's going to write something, just just go with your talent and write it. Then go back and do the technical fooling around with it. I, I exactly. Move forward is what you I, have to do. Yes, I like to go with the flow. I'm a I'm an early morning writer. I know some people uh -huh. like uh, to write late at night and different times. You know, I'm like a morning person, so I just kind of let it flow and. I've, I've caught myself, just like you said, I've caught myself from time to time slowing down, I'm like, oh, God, that's not right. And if, you know, if someone looks at that, yeah. they're good. And I said, stop it. Just stop it. Just no. let See, it flow, no. even if I think it's crap or something. And I go back and then I edit and then you tighten it up and you're like, oh, wait, this part was good. Oh, that doesn't need to be there. And so yeah. you got to let it flow. You have to. And the other thing I do is I think we're all better thinkers when we first wake up in the morning. So if you have a little notebook beside your bed, you got the idea, just write it down because you'll never remember it later in the day. Oh. You really need some good ideas, you know, so. Oh, that's so true. Stop then and do it, you know, so. Yeah. And I've texted it to myself too. Uh, when, oh, I, yeah. when I lived in LA, I took a screenwriting class. It was up on conference call, you know, before Zoom and all mm -hmm. this. Um, and if we would just be listening and stuff, taking notes and the, the teacher of the screenwriting workshop, you know, class, mm -hmm. two hour class, he said, if you have an idea while I'm right now, while I'm talking about the process of screenwriting, write it down because I've had students come back to me and say, oh, I, you know, I thought I'd remember it. And then after the class, I totally forgot my idea. So he said, yeah, same yep. thing you said, you know, write it down. Get it down, get it down and move on. You know, go back yeah. and pick it up later and you know, look at your notes, you know, so. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, I like to throw this out from time to time. Um, and you, it's uh, an optional question. But what advice would you say to writers and people, you know, creating their work, like work in progress when it comes to naysayers or maybe, you know, I mean, no names or anything like that. But, you know, people around or or, or people who kind of talk it down or, you know aren't as supportive as well people. what i think when i run into people like that is did they do it themselves <laughs> what's the <laughs> and 
you know, you're going to find that too with reviews. You get these one oh, yeah. or two star reviews, and I get to thinking, well, that was really nice, your opinion, but why would you say something like that if you've never done it yourself? I mean, there's no appreciation for what all went into it. There's a lot of hours and a lot of thinking. And, yeah. You know, so that's so true. I thought, yeah. Just ignore that. It's what you do. Right. Oh, yeah. you, know, you do it, and then I'll talk to you about it. You know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, it's like people watching the Olympics, like the high divers, like, oh, that was yeah. terrible. I could do that. And they're drinking yeah, a beer. Yeah, baloney. <laughs> Sorry. Don't even come close. <laughs> yeah. Have confidence um, in yourself. Just be confident in yourself and just say nonsense. You know, I'm going to do this. Oh, okay. yeah. I think confidence is 99% of it. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, I mean, you have to have talent and all that, but you've got to believe in yourself. You know, well, you know my, my hardest part was when I had uh, got sat with my agent, I said, what am I supposed to be writing about? And she said, more women read than men. So we want to do women's fiction. I go, well, look at me. I'm not a woman. Yeah. She said, well, I'm going to have wonderful. to learn how to write like a woman. So she helped me. And she said, a woman uh -huh. wouldn't say that or do it that way. And then the editor, that's why I hired a woman to be the editor, because <laughs> she also would clean it up for me and i think we came yeah. out pretty good but my women tend to be really strong they're more like men like women but you know they're women so, well um, i was a huge fan of xena warrior princess when it was yeah, on <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> yeah i love yeah. that work but my female character is very strong too she's psychic but she's also like a she has a celtic combat she's like yep. a psychic warrior in modern day mm -hmm. time yeah, so you got strong women, I, and that a yeah. lot of my reviews will say that. You know, I really like the strong women. You know, they're not muscle type right. women, but you know, they don't take any garbage from anybody either. They just go out and do what they're going to do, and they do it really well. You know, so I like that. <laughs> my, my protagonist is first story I ever wrote, which was Fruit of a Poisonous Tree. The agent came back. She says, "Your character reminds me of James Bond." And I said, you know, I didn't think about that, but I sure when I was a kid, I watched all kinds of James Bond movies and read James Bond. So he must have leaked in there because that's kind of what happened. So, like in their subconscious. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what happened. But oh, anyway. that's great. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I've seen every James Bond movie. I, I every oh, time they too. come out. And they're all good. You know? Yeah. And the thing about oh, James yeah. Bond that kind of taught me because I do a series, but you can read any series standalone. Mm -hmm. Just like you can watch a James Bond movie. I mean, you know what's going on. You know kind of the backstory. But I did that yeah. with my So you could just take something and go, hey, that's kind of interesting what happened before this. So I do standalone, but it's still a series. Same characters doing different stuff, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, um, so in closing, you know, we just have a couple minutes here. Any, excuse me, any last thoughts or comments on anything we've talked about? Anything you'd like to add? No, I just say, well, we said it a number of times, have confidence in yourself, get your story out there. And when you get it done, put it behind you and get on to the next one. I don't think you can do one book. I think you can just keep writing because it's that is yeah. in you, your creativity, and just keep going. And if you do self-publishing, well, KDP on Amazon is pretty good, real easy yeah. to do. Get your book out there, keep looking for an agent or whatever and find them. And then if that's what you want to do, go with it. But Get your book there and be sure it's edited. You just can't you can't edit anything yourself. Somebody else has to do it for you. All right, you right, exactly. Mistake, you made a mistake, you'll make it again and again and again. So let somebody else do it. Even if you have to pay them a little bit of money, you know, to make it look yeah. good. You need a professional second set of eyes. <laughs> exactly. You have to. Yeah. You're going to look professional. You want to do that. Right. So, so uh, my question for you is, do you have like a surfboard back there? Are you going to turn around and go surf those waves when we're done? <laughs> Actually, the best thing for me is to get one of those beach chairs and a bottle of Corona, you know, like you see, then yeah. you sit by the way. That's my way of surfing. <laughs> do you like it with the lime at the top? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a, a matter of fact, yeah, that's good. You punch it down in there and, and away you go. But uh, it, Well, it's perfect too because it's we're in the... Uh, middle towards the end of july and so you have mm -hmm. the perfect background we're in the middle of summer yeah no kidding so oh, no. i'm I perpetual just, halloween <laughs> i would just say you know learn your craft and do it and, and uh, just do it well and have confidence in yourself if you're going to write you do i mean you did 
That's true. That's true. It was a long journey, but you know. I may do another paranormal. I mean, I really did like my character, Azrael, um, the angel of death. She was a very kind person, and she she wasn't nasty or kind of like. Mm -hmm. That's why I had a demon. That's why I had Mazakim. You got to be the nasty guy. Which the villain. Kind of, yeah, so they could kind of oppose each other, you know. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, I love it, and I can't wait to read it. I've got a long list of books to read, but I love reading books, so yeah. and I like to write them, too. <laughs> if you want an audio, I'll send you one. I've got a bunch of free ones. So oh, you that's you great. Audio, just tell me, and I'll send it to you. You can download it and listen to it later. You know, the title came from The Girl Who Knew Death, Death being you know, angel of death, and she knew was on a the angel of death with her, was friendship with her. And the other thing I found out: if you're going to have a book title, they need to be searchable. And "girl" is one of the most searched t- t- words on Amazon. So you oh, really? have to, that's why there's so many books that have the. Oh, word, I see. Who, the girl did that, and so mine was the girl who knew death, which was basically Azriel knew. Angel yes, yes. They were friends. So that's kind of how that worked out. Oh, I love that. And that kind of helped with the title and everything. No, especially the girl part. <laughs> yes, the girl. The girl in the title. Sorry. Yeah, well, it's just well, a really search You know, word. oh, I'm sorry, what? That was just a really highly searched word. So I had to use it. Yeah, yeah. Good keyword there. Yeah. Um, keyword. So I say this at the end of each. Uh, interview uh first of all thank you norm harris yeah, i really like this i'm glad i got here on time that was really yeah yeah <laughs> i know you're west coast i'm east coast and thank yeah, you so much for yeah. for doing this uh on a friday night and i say to everyone um thank you again for watching and may all your all right, paranormal pleasure. encounters be magical sorry yeah. any last another last word no no that's fine um <laughs> i would just say if you're going to think about buying the girl who knew death it's just the the audio is so because it's, it's like watching a movie and and maria the narrator can do 20 different characters with 20 different speech and she can tell exactly who she's who's talking at the moment you know so it, oh really that's good. wonderful I do it myself <laughs> yeah so definitely consider the audio version uh as well of the girl mm-hmm. who knew death and go to amazon you guys it's right on there norm harris the author and thanks again norm oh thank you this was a lot of fun thank you for so much oh cool bye everybody